let's break it down and look at uh, the transatlantic relationship because it seems to me that the European Union is essentially quite dependent on whoever is at the White House. The tensions when uh, President Trump was in, in power were very clear. Now President Biden is there and it seems that that contributed to some sort of renewal of the transatlantic relationship. But my question to you is, going forward, is the transatlantic relationship actually sustainable or is it something that it's actually very delicate because of the internal politics in the United States? Well, I would say any relationship is delicate to a certain degree and it, need, it, takes, it takes two to tango. It takes both sides, so to, so to say. And, uh, but for instance, from our side, I can only talk as a representative of the Austrian government, we took a decision to invest in transatlantic relationship. And I don't choose who is sitting in the White House, but it's a strategic uh, decision done by the Austrian government. And I believe it's, uh, it, it's simply paramount. It's extremely important for both the Americans and the Europeans. And if anything, then the current crisis we're living, that we have again war in Europe, brings us closer together. And I believe that won't change so quickly. And do you think that there's the same understanding stateside? I have the feeling, yes. And there, there's always a necessity to discuss. I mean, now we have the IRA uh, in the United States. So, but that's normal. We have the tendency, and that's another point, of treating discussions as if they were a symptom of crisis. No, our democracy is based on discussing, on debate, public or private. So this is not a sense of weakness. This is a sense of trying to find common ground. And we need that within the European Union. We need that within governments and national states. And we need it across the Atlantic. So it's, it's very normal. And whenever there's a problem, we always unite. We always get together. We have proven again on the 24th of February. Had anybody told me on the 23rd of February that I will have this sense of unity of cohesion within the Council of the European Union and with our friends, Australia, New Zealand, Canada, US and others, um, I, probably I would have doubted it. But the sense of, of unity and togetherness has been enormous and I don't see why this should be going. I want to uh, pay attention at the relationship with China as well because when I'm in Brussels I hear a lot of comment on how China is a rival, it is a competitor, and yet, at the same time, they need to forge relationships, stronger relationships with China when it comes to climate change, when it comes to trade. My question to you, Minister, is how to strike this balance? What is the best approach when you're dealing with a country that you've essentially said it is a rival? I believe what I said beforehand, um, stop wishful thinking, be realistic. The world is not black and white. But the world is different shades of grey. And yes, you, you mentioned it yourself. We need China on many issues, on climate, for instance. On others, and that's why we as European Union say they're competitors and they're systemic rivals. It depends on what area you're talking about. And I, uh, Wolfgang Ischinger, the former president of the Munich Security Conference, uh, recently said a sentence which I appreciate and like. He said the assumption that you can minimize political risks by creating mutually economic dependencies has proven wrong with authoritarian states. And we have learned this lesson now the hard way with Russia. Mm -hmm. And we have to see that China, there's a big question mark here. Is therefore the biggest lesson for the EU to actually try to forge as many relationships as possible across the world? Because clearly there was a huge dependency on Russian gas. Yeah, we, had, we definitely uh, made mistakes. We have outsourced our security to the US, outsourced our energy needs to Russia, and our economic needs to China to a certain degree. And now, after two years of pandemic and now the war, we have to reassess, and this reassessment is taking place, not only on the political level, but also in boardrooms across the continent. And there are many, uh, sometimes I talk about, it's like an earthquake, and we see tectonic shifts do not yet know where things will stop. Mm -hmm. But I believe the world will not look the same five years from here. 